back from Moab, back in the shop. Shop truck did great as expected out there, had tons of fun. Uh, I'm gonna wheel it a few more times before I tackle the ball joints on it. Um, I wanna basically put it through its paces around here as well. So for the next uh, little bit, I need to work on this truck right here. Uh, probably the rest of this week, I think. Uh, this is the first week back after Moab. Once again, we're back on the Defender. Um, this just has a pile of little things that I gotta knock out. Uh, it doesn't have appointment finally at the interior shop to get the top done, so I'm working towards that date. I'm still waiting on the proper wheels and tires. These are still just temps that are on there. I'm actually going down tire size, down to 35s, um, and in a little bit. I don't like how they stick out past those big uh, fender flares. So we're going down to tire size. So I got the bumpers all done, and I got to do the rock sliders next. They're cut. I just have to weld them and then get them onto the truck. But while I'm at the back of the truck, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the tail lights and all that kind of stuff. Now, uh, all the wiring is done at the back of the truck. We have everything back here for the tail lights and everything you can see, these wires, they're all, you know, we got license plate light. We got, what's this one? Uh, turn left, all this stuff, all labeled and ready to go. Uh, and they all mount up in this area right here. But as I'm sure you can imagine, since I don't have anywhere to figure out where it goes, I need to basically do that by my on my own because this is 100% custom body. So I've got my handy dandy laser here right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the laser up, have it shoot, basically shoot a line on the body. You can see it's basically shooting it right here because I want it to be, if I just, I want to basically drop this line down till it's here, measure it so it's uh, perfectly fine. And then what I can do is uh, basically mark there and then determine where all of the lights go. I do have to look up some uh, pictures of some of the defenders. There's a bunch of different ways these defenders had the lights down in the back. Uh, the owner of this truck sent me a picture as to what he wants the lights to look at. So I'm going to set that line up and then start going some holes. All the lights are now in the back of the Defender. So now the back end is done. Um, <clears throat> what I need to do work on now is, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna come around, go around to the front. I'm gonna go around to the front, work on the front bumper brackets, get that knocked out, and then work on getting the grill in it. The grill for this Defender is 100% custom, so it needs a little bit extra uh, care. And well, it's not 100% custom, it's just a custom land order for Defender grill that's incredibly expensive because it's uh, from a Land Rover aftermarket company. Anyway, we'll talk about that when we put it in. Uh, I think I'll work on the front bumper brackets and get that all taken care of next. Um, we'll get that in there mocked up just like the rear bumper bracket. I haven't wired the lights in yet. Uh, I'll wait for uh, till that's 100% done. I'll get my wiring guy back. I do have to come up with something here because this is where the tag goes. That's where the license plate goes right here. So I'm going to have to come up with some little light right there, but I don't know what it's going to be quite yet. But we'll worry about that later. Right now, it's time to mess around with that front bumper. Before I put that front bumper on, there's two things that I need to deal with. Number one, I gotta cut the hole um, for the winch fairly to come out. So I gotta deal with that. Um, that's gonna be with the front bumper on. But I also need to set where the front bumper's gonna sit. And a lot of that's gonna be in relation to this grill. Now this is the grill that came with my body from Aqualoo, and it's kind of like a stock Defender grill. But uh, the guy that owns this truck, he has requested a very specific grill. This is a KBX grill for the Defender. Um, it's a very fancy grill and it's got fancier little headlight surrounds that go with it. Um, here's just an example of why building custom Land Rover Defenders is silly. So 
Uh, the owner of this truck, he really wants it to have that Defender style. And so he sent me some key things that he wanted to have on it. One being this grill, and the other being these two items here. He wanted these KBX side vents, and he wanted these top vents as well. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Just so you know, these are official Land Rover parts that I've made work on this Aqualoo body. The grill is plastic. All right, so let's take a good look. So this grill is literally just a piece of super thin plastic with some fake metal. I guess that might actually be real metal behind it. This, this is also just some plastic with some plastic little inserts that are painted silver. This at least is like a heavy duty plastic with a metal grill inside. To purchase those items, a plastic grill and four pieces of plastic to bolt on the fender was almost $3,000, if you can believe it. $3,000 for a plastic grill and four pieces of plastic. Blew my mind when I saw that. I was like, that's crazy. The, the truck came the truck came with this grill, which is also plastic. This is plastic. This is plastic. You know, this grill's plastic. It came with some factory style headlight surrounds, which were plastic. But apparently, if you have a Land Rover, you have to have specific plastic to be cool. So, anyway, that's the end of my Land Rover rant. Um, it, it, like, literally shocked me when I saw the bill for these. It blew my mind. But anyway, that's what the guy wants. That's what he's getting. Uh, so before I mock up my front bumper, I'm going to put the grill on to make sure that everything lines up perfect. Okay, so I'm mocking up this uh, incredibly expensive plastic aftermarket Land Rover part. And I have to go on just one more rant. I'd like to point something out. Now, yes, I know I'm working with an aftermarket body, but I will say this. I had put the original Land Rover parts, that was an actual Land Rover part number, headlights around, simple plastic, wasn't sexy, but it fit perfect all the holes lined up with the holes that came with this aqualoo tub bolted right in so now i'm working with this the grill itself wasn't three grand i think it was like 1200 1300 bucks still expensive expensive as i'll get out just to get a plastic grill for your land rover anyway so now look at this so now i've got it in here i'm working on getting the holes all lined up first of all it didn't fit the headlight correctly so i had to move the location of these two holes here so those are opened up and put in and now look over here look there's the mounting holes for the upper mount they don't line up at all and the holes for the lower light they don't line up at all either i guess it's not a huge deal because it means i just got to drill four new holes it's just annoying if this was going on my really expensive land rover and i paid thousands or a thousand dollars for this and it didn't line up i wouldn't be happy but i can make it work so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the same as it in the back i'm going to use the gasket for the light as the template i'll set it in place i'll make sure it's fitting perfect i'll punch two new holes punch two holes in the bottom and i can put the, the that light all back in and then i'll tighten up the uh the allen head stainless fasteners that i put in there i mean i'll i mean it does look cool i'll give it that it's a cool looking it's a cool looking package i would just hope that for the amount of money you have to give for it that it would have fit a little better i guess i'm just asking too much for the land rover aftermarket <laughs>
Okay, so the entire front end of the truck is now done. We got this bumper in place. Uh, these are spots for some fog lights. Uh, winch comes through the bumper. Fair lead bolts on there. Obviously, that will bolt on after everything's done. You can see this makes the front of this truck nice and tight. Pulls everything close to the body. I did the same sort of end caps on the end, but just sort of wrapped them sort of here, matching with these fender flares. Now I'm going to start working on the rock sliders. Rock sliders are super simple. It's just going to be same thing, inch and a half tubing. Well, not same thing. The front's different, but inch and a half. Uh, I think this is three sixteenths wall, if I remember correctly. Tubing might be no three uh, one and a half eighth wall. That's what it is. It's going to be a simple bar that runs all the way back. I'm going to do some kickers that go back into the frame and wall in there. The one thing I do need to add is a filler plate right here to make up this for some reason. Um, I don't know why that doesn't match up with the body. I don't know if that's an Aqualu thing or a Land Rover thing. Based on what I've learned about Land Rovers, it's probably a Land Rover thing. Um, and they probably built the fenders to match the Land Rover. So I'm just gonna cut a little filler piece in there. I think that might be a cool spot for the little rock light. That's not really a rock light, just shines out the side. I'm gonna see if I have any small ones that could surface mount on there. But that's the plan there. These are gonna be super simple. I've already pulled the measurements. I'm just gonna cut some stuff out on the plasma table, cut some stock on my horizontal bandsaw, and I'm gonna build them all off the truck over on my fab table. I'll build both sides the same, and then we'll just put them on. And they're gonna be welded to the frame, not bolted to the frame. So we're gonna weld to the frame, that's it. Um, so I'll have to paint them before they go on. Same with the front bumper. Front bumper is now ready to go on. So what I'll do now is I'll pull it off, get it prepped paint. Same with the rear bumper, pull it. They're basically, they're just gonna get uh, basically undercoated with some uh, textured black. That's what's going on there. Oh, look who's over here having a sleepy nap time. Zelda's having sleepy nap time. Hi, Zelda. How you doing, Zelda? Say hi to everybody. Oh, would you like a tummy rub, huh? Okay, tummy rub for Zelda. All right, well, what I'm gonna do right now is plasma table, fab table, and then they'll be ready to paint. Okay, rock sliders, bumpers, all done. Uh, I'm actually just giving them a coat of uh, the Herculiner bed liner. I really, really like that stuff. I actually used it on the frame for the Colorado that I built for Ultimate Adventure last year. It was amazing. It worked so good. It laid down so good, and it just stayed. I really didn't even prep the material that much. This time, I went through, wiped the everything down with some acetone, hit it with a DA, um, just get a little bit of bite. 
and then I've gone ahead and I've painted them. I'm probably going to do two or three light coats of that bed liner. Uh, in the meantime, while those dry, I'm going to start working on a light bar. The plan from the very beginning on this truck was to come up with some sort of cool light bar across the front of this rig. Uh, the cage on this, I built it. It's not really a cage per se, because uh, all it does is attach to that upper body line right there. Uh, I've said this before, this is not an off-roading truck. Um, this is like a family, I'll be honest with you, the guy that owns this, probably never gonna see four-wheel drive. If it does, it's gonna be like maybe at the beach, occasionally. Um, it's going up to Nantucket, that's where it's gonna spend its life up there. So, saying that, I don't really think it's gonna need any serious roll cage protection, but that uh, basically sport cage looking thing, is strong enough for what it's going to do and then more importantly the soft top is going to fit around that whole thing it is anchored into the top of the aqualoo tub everywhere um, and that tub is 3 16 aluminum all the way down and it's anchored at the corner there and the corner there and the b pillar also ties into the hinge at the b pillar and then it mounts to the front fender so in all honesty in a rollover it probably would hold up just fine my concern is there is no x bracing in it so that's why i'm not going to call it a roll cage in any way if anything i'm going to call it like a i'm going to call it a sport bar just like jeep does it's a sport bar sport cage sport cage sport bar soft top holder that's what it's going to be anyway so we're going to do a light bar across the front we want some big beefy lights up there to sort of really sell that land rover uh look to it and uh so i'm going to lay that out on the fab table and then figure out the build on that and then get it up on the truck as well So slowly working on the light bar now for the cage. Uh, you can see I'm using these uh, Baja Designs LP6s. Uh, I'm gonna have two ambers on the outside, three uh, whites. Uh, the clears, I guess they're clears, I should say, are a mix of driving and spotlights. Same with the ambers. Uh, they'll be switched, ambers on one switch, the three uh, clears on another switch. I just made some tabs on the plaza table, got those welded up. Basically, I've clamped into place because I'm going to do like an overbar. It's a pretty standard look um, for these sort of like light bars that are up, up on this roof section up here. It's going to go basically right from, I'm going to try to get it to mount right even with the uh, rubber line on that windshield frame. Um, I'm contemplating whether or not to make it removable. I really don't think there's ever going to be a time when the owner of this vehicle puts the windshield down. I also think we're going to be integrating the soft top into the windshield. So I don't really think I need to worry about making this thing removable. I think I'm just going to mount it to the cage and have it sit. Just proud of that uh, rubber seal on the windshield. I think it should be good. But right now what I've done is um, I should say every I don't bend any tubing anymore without drawing it in Benton Tech Pro. Um, it is such a handy uh, program to have. Let me show you how and why. Um, so it's Benton Tech Pro is the same software that I basically use uh, for all my flat plate drawing and cutting on my plasma table. So this is kind of where I come when it comes time to bend tube as well. So I was able to basically pull one of their templates up this template allows you just to choose where you want the dimensions, either outside, center, or inside of all of the uh, basically joints. I chose outside because that's what I measured. Uh, so 58 inches to the outside, uh, 46 inches, or I think 40, yeah, 46 inches to the inside, and then nine inches tall. And then what I did is I added an inch. Uh, you can add cutoff, start, cutoff, end. I've added an inch to this uh, bar just in case that notch, because I think that notch is going to take up that whole inch and rather have it just a little bit too tall. But the nice thing about the Bentec Pro is it tells you exactly how uh, long to cut it. In this case, I'm going to be cutting a piece of tubing at 66 and a quarter inches. Uh, I have my uh, die and my material already uh, basically saved on the computer how it works. Uh, and then you just mark the locations. So at 3.47, that's three, basically three and a half. And at 47 and three quarters. Uh, and then the angle, 56 degrees. So all I gotta do now 
is basically cut that tube, mark the tube, bend it according to those instructions, and the tube will fit. I do all my tube work on Bentec Pro, even for something as simple as that little hoop that's gonna go over those lights. It just makes life so much easier. The other thing you can do is if you're drawing complex things like this cage, I did the, or what I think we're calling this a sport cage, this sport cage on this Defender. I was able to draw the whole thing and then really get a feel for what it was gonna look like uh, before I bent a single piece of tubing. And that way I'm able to basically figure out exactly what I want it to look like. You basically just set up the points for the cage. So they're called pick points. I put a point in the back corner, a point at that C pillar, a point at the B pillar, and then a point at the A, uh, a pillar that, where it bolts onto that fender. And then you just draw the whole thing. You can then know exactly how much tubing to buy, which when I built that cage, it really wasn't that expensive. Uh, that's all inch and three quarter DOM. Ooh, that right there would be so expensive right now. I think when I built that uh, sport cage, it was $3 a foot. Last time I bought it, I actually was shocked that DOM was $20 a foot. I couldn't believe it. I think it was just a price spike. I ended up actually buying Chrome Molly because it was cheaper. Um, but anyway, it'll, it'll, when you draw something like that, you can draw the whole assembly like that and then break it out into individual parts and it'll give you that same information that I just showed you on the screen. How long, where to bend it, yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. The nice thing is, is you'll know exactly how much steel to buy so you're not buying a whole bunch of extra, you're not gonna have a bunch of stuff laying around and uh, it'll save you time. You can also program into the program how much the tubing weighs by foot and then it will tell you exactly how much that cage is gonna weigh or if you're building a chassis, it'll tell you how much it's gonna weigh. It's, it's really invaluable. I love that program. If you're just getting into and doing any type of fab work or tube work, buy the program, it's well worth the money. It's really not that much. It'll pay for itself the first time you do a job in your shop. So now, I'm gonna cut a piece of tubing, then I'm going to bend it, notch it, tack it in. so that's probably where I'm gonna stop on the Defender uh, for this week I still have a couple things I gotta do I'm waiting on a spacer for the front springs I think I'm actually gonna space the front end up a little bit sitting a little low in the front that's because of that R2.8 that's under there uh, but you can see the front ends all done that's all finished light bars all done rock sliders are on nothing fancy just simple two by two rock sliders down the side and then the rear bumper with the reverse lights is all mounted up as well that wire hanging down there is for the license plate light which is going to go right here i'm just trying to just figure out what type of license plate frame what type of license plate light i'm going to do now i do have an issue 
and that is I was working on my front seat mounts, uh, redoing those, which is fine. Uh, and the plan was to put two Recaro buckets back here. They will not fit in between these wheel wells. So we're kind of in a situation right now where I got to figure out what we're going to do with that situation because the two Recaro buckets will not fit unless I cut up the tub. Not really something that I want to do right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to pause on this right now. I got a conference call with the owner of this truck next week, uh, talk about some things getting the top done and I think we'll d discuss those seat issues at that same time there so that's where we're gonna stop it for now um, I got to actually get my car trailer in here do a little bit of work on it um, and that'll be the next video because uh, we're gonna do a whole rebuild on that uh, car trailer because you guys love when I put the drive over fenders on it and so I'm gonna knock that out and I'm gonna do a complete rebuild on that on that trailer with some new axles that I got from a new sponsor so anyway, all right, guys, so thanks again for hanging out inside the Big Tag Garage. Uh, we'll catch you next time when we are working on a trailer.